is our first guest. Yes, absolutely. So as we move him over, Len May, the CEO of Endocana, a uh, really cool company. And I'll just say a, a couple of brief words about Len. Um, but this is, this is crazy. He's more than 25 years of cannabis and genomics experience. And I, that, that seems, Lynn, you are the OG in the space. You have to be. Yeah, well, you were talking about shine. So when I started, I actually had a full head of hair, but now I have the shine. So yeah, that's what <laughs> cannabis will do to you. God bless you. God yeah. bless you. I'm starting to see it myself, man. I got that gray coming in. <laughs> Keep, keep working in cannabis, man. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. No kidding, man. Oh, you think you can bank? No, no bank account for you. Exactly. Yeah. God bless you. So listen, 25 years of experience. You Let me just rattle some of this off because this is cool. Past positions as president of the Cannabis Action Network, board member and lifetime member of California Cannabis Association, and you currently chair the CBDIA Science Board. That's a lot, man. That is a lot. So, so the, the experience that you brought to this space and what Indocan is doing, I, I mean, everybody must want to work with you because exactly. I feel like yeah, every, everybody wants to work with us. So tell me um, more. Tell us more. What is, is Indocan doing, man? We have to know. Everybody's waiting. Everybody with wants to work here. with us, but not everybody knows what we do. That's the issue. Like, oh, it sounds so cool. Yes. Yeah, because it, it's hard to imagine that, you know, our DNA can actually control our experience with cannabis. And, you know, and it's, I don't understand why it's hard to imagine because everything is personalized. We do a lot of things right now, especially given the current climate and all that stuff. You know, we want to have personalized healthcare. We want to have personalized vitamins. We have, why not personalized cannabis? And that's exactly the, the reason why we started this whole thing is to be able to use DNA to provide you a roadmap on how to consume cannabis and your optimal ca cannabinoid and terpene profile. And the reason why we actually did this is so people can avoid a negative experience with cannabis. Once Super you're cool. able to avoid a negative experience and you know that there's some potholes along the way, you can have an optimal experience with cannabis. And you know, cannabis changed so much over the years. Uh, I, was, I was recently doing a show with, uh, with a guy and he was like, yeah, you know, I used to equate uh, you know, smoking a joint to a bottle of beer. One beer equals one joint. I said, well, not nowadays. Maybe that was back in the 70s. I don't know now, if it works that way. Yeah. You're going to smoke a joint by yourself. Uh, I'm not sure about that. So, and, and then it's not, even, it's not even the consumption of how much you smoke or what you consume. It is what type of cannabis is, good, is right for you. So, and that's kind of what we do is we, we use DNA to be able to guide you through that optimal cannabinoid experience. You're personalizing it. You know, you're taking the stigma out individually, one person at a time, but obviously on a mass scale. <laughs> it, yeah, well, it's, it's, taken, it's taken the stigma out. It's also scientifically based. So my personal belief, and as you rattle off a lot of these uh, things I did and all that, it's, it's great, but I, I start off as a patient. You know, so I know the cannabis worked for me for, uh, to take care of uh, uh, my ADD. I was on all kinds of medications and then uh, cannabis became like my go-to uh, therapeutic. And I know that other people have this, this need and people are concerned about what to find that works for them. But at the end of the day, I was also an activist. I was the president of the Cannabis Action Network. I held a rally at Independence Hall in Philadelphia. Like this is wh where I'm uh, from. I live in Los Angeles now. but this is the reason why we want to we want to do this and laws are changing but i i believe it's going to change through science and the only way that we're going to do this is by taking control of the science pointing to the science and actually participating in the research and it doesn't have to be clinical trials it can be observational studies that are controlled to show people that these group of people do really well with this type of cannabinoid terpene profile and these people do not so once we are able to provide that information that as we're doing, uh, then brands can do a better job of creating products that are more personalized, as you were saying, Elliot. So let's, let's dive into that for a second. I find that to be super, super interesting. And I know that there have been trials. I know that there, there's been research into, into the cannabis space and the plant in and of itself. 
But I think, especially since we've started dabbling in psychedelics in that industry specifically, what I'm hearing from a lot of those executives is that they're benefiting from quicker access to data, quicker access to clinical trials and research than what has been true in the cannabis space over the however many years that we've been doing this now. God, it feels like decades, but, but um, and for you, it really is decades. But w- when it comes down to it, what kind of data are you looking for in those observational studies uh, in, in making cannabis more personalized for your clients? And I'd love to get into that and talk more about who those people are. What kind of data do you think is important? Well, the kind of data that's important is to be able to look at somebody's genetic profile. So you look at certain genes that have a direct or indirect association with your endocannabinoid system. Mm-hmm. Then you look at the other side and you look at the genetics of the plant. You look at the cannabinoid profile and you look at the terpene profile and you see how the DNA of the plant interacts with the DNA of the human being and to see any of those symptomatic conditions where people actually consume cannabis for. So it could be for anxiety, for, for uh, sleep or rest, uh, for inflammation and to see if those markers, those genetic markers have been expressed, triggered, turned on, or they have been turned off. So there's different examples of that. Let's say that somebody's uh, uh, consuming cannabis and is uh, experiencing anxiety. Well, there's a gene for that. So what are you consuming? Are you consuming, and I don't like to use indicas and sativas, but you know, for the general audience, a sativa dominant type of hybrid that is uh, limonene, uh, terpene dominant, that gives you a serotonin boost, gives you an up. Well, if you have a genetic predisposition towards that anxiety uh, or that feeling of stress, that that uh, cultivar ratio formulation may actually trigger that genetic expression. But if you know this about yourself, then you may want to consume you know something that has more of a balanced CBD to THC ratio and also a different terpene profile like linalool. Uh, as a primary terpene, which actually helps lessen the anxiety it's provoked by THC. And we know this because there are studies. There's over 16,000 studies in PubMed alone on cannabis. We can actually draw on those studies and every single thing that we say has a peer reviewed reference associated with that. Hmm. Plus, we're participating in studies ourselves. So one of the studies, just to give you an example, it has to do with metabolic function. How do you metabolize? If you're a poor metabolizer, you guys know anybody or ever had a, a negative experience with an edible? I say this when I speak. It's like, yes, yes. <laughs> and not only oh, yeah. do you have the 11 oxyhydroxide conversion, your liver conversion, but you could be a poor metabolizer. If you're a poor metabolizer through the digestive system, guess what? You're in for an interesting experience. It's going to be slower onset. It's going to be a much longer onset. And if you know this about yourself, then consume differently. Consume sublingually. But think about it this way. Even if you are a poor metabolizer and you're going to have this intense experience, but you also have genes that are associated with psychotic-like effects. So not only are you having an intense experience, but you also trigger a genetic expression for a psychotic-like effect, and you can hallucinate. Maybe that's a positive thing for some people, but you can have a pretty adverse uh, experience. And what's going to happen? You're going to say, if you're a new, if you're new to cannabis, you're going to say, oh, no, this is not good for me. And you can tell other people within your network that this doesn't work. But just because it didn't work for you or you didn't know what to consume for yourself personally, somebody else may have a completely different experience. So by you having an optimal experience avoiding an adverse event, we're able to use science to be able to get people uh, to remove this ridiculous stigma about this plant. Which goes into recreational too, right? I mean, you just touched on, and I think right there, the psychotic aspect of what you're saying. But, you know, I mean, this is going to, I, I would imagine, shift how people per- perceive it on a recreational standpoint as well. Well, absolutely. And we were just talking about this example of, uh, you know, a joint equals a beer kind of thing. Another, another example, I ha- we're working with, uh, uh, and I call them patient, we're, we're, not, we're not doctors, so I, I want to make sure I'm very careful uh, to disclaim that, but there's a woman who's uh, who has MS, uh, multiple sclerosis, and she's consumed cannabis medically through a doctor for 15 years. She consumes whatever you know her ratio formulation is. Then um, she was out somewhere. Somebody gave her a vape. She vaped, and she had a panic attack. 
And now, and she emailed us and she goes, I, when I go back to my original formulation, whatever I consumed before, I have panic attacks. So what happens is these genes stay dormant. And when she consumed something that was a very high, probably THC and endocrine therapy, it actually turned that gene on. So she had a genetic expression that got turned on. And now what we need to do is see if we can turn that off and see, so a different formulation. And what she came back to us was a, a beautiful statement. <clears throat> she said, now that I did my endo DNA test and I found my ideal ratio, it allowed me to be me again. And that's all we wanna do is to have, give the power back to the people so they can actually have a more, a better experience with their cannabis use for whatever reason, even if they wanna do this recreationally or uh, therapeutically. To me, there is no difference between recreational and therapeutic. Anything that's changing your, your state in any way is a, an, an altering state uh, you know, substance. So to me, it's a therapeutic supplement. And however you consume it is up to you. And some people may need it for medical condition. Some people may need it to just, hey, I need to unwind instead of a glass of wine. So however you guys quantify that, those are the different things. And, and Patrick, I didn't forget about your question about the data. The data that we That's collect, okay. so, so a study that we're doing now is looking at, uh, you know, different people that are participating in the study. What we did find was that 80% of the people that participated in our specific study had a genotype in common that was 0.0004% common in the general population, which hmm. is a really interesting way to be able to get research out there and say, hey, maybe it's not, you know, there's, there's liver challenges, all kinds of things that people, that the FDA actually coming up with when it has to do with cannabis, but maybe it's not across the board. Maybe it's just for certain people that have a specific genotype and they may need to have a different uh, type of cannabinoid uh, or a terpene profile. So once you're able to get personalized on the results that we're getting from all the research and anecdotal data that we're getting, now we can start pulling or pushing into more clinical trials. But everything is done under institutional review boards. So it's anonymized and it's done you know, the right way, the way that you would do an actual trial. Very smart, very smart. Uh, any way that we can lend credence and legitimacy to the industry, we want to do that. So um, one other question. I mean, you mentioned the endo DNA test. I want to hear a little bit more about that. I have this, I would imagine you guys have to do so much education, not only to your clients, right, to you know, help them understand why this is important, why we need to make sure that these strains or, or formulations actually do what they're saying they should be doing. Um, but I have this I have this vision in my head of going into the drugstore or the, the grocery store and seeing the Dr. Scholl's uh, setup where you, where you stand on the sensor and it tells you exactly what kind of, of foot insert you need in your shoe, right? So tell us about this Indo DNA test, man. What does it look like? How do people get it? Um, and, and, and yeah, what, what's well, going on Well, that's exactly there? it. That's exactly how we, where you go into a, a pharmacy and you stand on a little device and- Wouldn't that be you? awesome? <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? Based on the, the size of the arch in your foot, this is what strain you need. Yeah, that's the future. Uh, well, we're not there yet. So this is the interim uh, future right now. It's uh, the same way that you would get like a 23andMe or an Ancestry or any of the other DNA tests, except okay. we don't have to fill up a, a tube with spit for 20 minutes. I don't know, that, that was difficult for me to do. Ours is a buccal swab. It's basically a Q-tip. It's a kit. You can buy it in a store. You can buy it online at endodna.com. It comes to your home. You swab it into your mouth. You put it back in the tube. You put it in the box. It's already pre-dressed stamped, and you ship it over to a lab. Now, the most important thing is all that is easy, but before you ship it, you have to register. And this is a really, really important part of why you need to do that, because we are HIPAA compliant. We're fully anonymized, and people are concerned about their DNA. If you do not register, we will not know that your DNA belongs to you because all the information resides on Amazon's AWS server. It's fully encrypted. And your, inform your personal information and your DNA are in two different parts. So when you're the only one that has the decryption code, when you log into your portal, which is HIPAA compliant and anonymized again, all that information belongs to you. I can never see your DNA matching the individual. So it's really important to be able to know that. And the other part that what we do you, and it takes around four weeks to get your results. Okay. But the other part is, if you've already taken a 23andMe, if you've already taken an Ancestry, any of the other tests, you own your raw data, 
and so does big pharma, but that's a whole other thing, but you own your, your raw data and you can upload your raw data to our uh, portal and you get your results within 30 seconds. So you don't- Oh, wow, see. okay. Very cool. Awesome. And the one, the one other part that I uh, didn't mention is we, once you have your results and once you have your formulation, this is your ideal ratio of cannabinoids and terpenes, you can say, okay, I'll get a, I'm going to go to a dispensary and I'm going to buy my one-to-one -one with limonene and beta caryophyll However, we took it a step further. We have a matching algorithm that we look at products that are geofenced using certificates of analysis where we match those products based on your ideal ratio. So we can tell you that, you know, where you reside, these are products available and these are a 60, 70, 80, 90% match to what your suggested ratio is. So as we get more information for more product manufacturers and companies, we'll have a much more uh, comprehensive database for them as well. Very cool. And so where are you in the creation of that database? Is that still it's, in its-, it's No, it's, it's active and live now. It's- uh, Very cool. We just, we just keep adding more and more products as manufacturers share their certificates of analysis with us. So everything is active and live. We launched in uh, 2017. Uh, we've been in, in business in this uh, iteration since, uh, uh, yeah, since 2017, so for the last three years. And right now, you were talking about the cannabis market. Yes, there's an increase, but also what we've seen, and uh, complete transparency, the first several weeks of uh, you know, COVID, we were like, what the hell is going on? Because no sales, like what is going on? And I think people were in shock as, as we were, what, what happens, what do we do? But what happened over time, as people are at home, and as you were saying, the cannabis industry is increasing, the sales are increasing, more strategic alliances and partnerships are happening. When you're sitting at home, maybe take some time and swab and find out what is that cannabis that you're going to have delivered to your home? What's right for me? So it gives you a little bit of time. So that actually is uh, you know, boosting our business somewhat. And then all these companies are starting to come to us and they want to research. They want to see what differentiates their product. How do they know? Their product actually works, and I swore involved in a bunch of projects like that with different. Things. That's exactly what I wanted to. My my really, I think, last question here, and I think this is the overarching theme of this cannabis hour: are the partnerships that you have to create for something like this to succeed. Obviously, you have to play within a lot of sectors within this one industry, and probably outside this industry as well. And it looks like you are doing that. So, in terms of what's been most important to you, what are some partnerships that you can touch on? Uh, you know, that have helped in Nocana succeed so far and probably will going forward as well, I should yeah. say. Well, I mean, partnerships are key. And, and this is the thing in this industry, and we, we see this all the time, that you have to have an integration of good, solid partners that really want to do the right thing. It's not just about coming in and getting land grab and grab the most and get licenses and all that stuff. It's really coming out with effective products. And the companies that really understand that really are the companies that we partner with. We have partnerships with a company like Medical Marijuana Inc., Canaway. We have partnerships with the, the NFL Players Congress, which is distributing the settlement uh, for NFL players. And uh, we're actually helping them with finding the right type of uh, cannabinoid profile for them, uh, tinctures, sublinguals, et cetera. Uh, there's uh, also partnerships with a few other very large companies that, that we're doing some interesting uh, research with that I can't talk about just yet but we will be publishing in the very near future, so you guys will see. But it's the household uh, cannabis brands that everybody knows. Um, you know, I can give you a hint, one of them is affiliated with uh, a, uh, a little girl that uh, passed away recently. Uh, that's as much as uh, I can probably say uh, legally, but uh, we, have, uh, we, have a, a lot of, uh, we have a lot of incredible companies that really wanna do the right thing. And this is, this is ideal. When you want to, when you look at this as, you know, this has been available for us as a therapeutic for thousands of years and all these laws, and I, it's, it's, inc it's incredible to see what happened in the last 25 years. We're not there yet, but we're moving, we're moving the needle together, but it's, it's moving the needle in the right way. And it's moving the needle with the companies and the individuals that run those companies that really see this as a therapy, as a wellness product. What can you do to differentiate your brand? What can you do to put some science behind that? And any company that's doing this, there's no reason why they shouldn't look at personalizing their solutions. It's everything. And think about it this way. 
you have genes that you're born with, you're born with all your genes, but there are certain genes you can't change. So like, you know, your height, your eye color, your hair color, or, you know, male pattern baldness, that's something that you're gonna have. Other genes are able to be turned on and off based on lifestyle. And your lifestyle means it's not just cannabis, that's one of them. It means what your nutrition, what are you putting in your body, uh, your mindset, what are you doing in your body? So overall wellness and health, cannabis is a big part of that because it helps to modulate all these other systems, but it's not just that. So understanding everything you can about yourself empowers you. And I think that during this whole you know, pandemic with COVID, we see that the healthcare system is very easily overwhelmed. We're very good at addressing something when it happens. But what we're not good at is preventing something from happening in the first place. And the more mm -hmm. information you have to empower yourself with that information and the knowledge, you're able to take action in order to have a more, you know, balanced life. And that's, you know, what cannabis does and everything else. So you said it. You, you said it, man. That is really cool. Knowledge is power for sure. And it, it seems that way for the consumer. It seems that way for the companies that probably work with you. So where can people find you? What's the website they should go to for the tests and any of the companies that are listening to potentially partner with you? Yes, endo, E-N-D-O-D-N-A.com. Endodna.com. And you can, anybody can reach out to me, my email, len, L-E-N, at endodna.com. And we're, we're at uh, endodna on all the other social platforms. So please reach out. If anybody wants to partner, anybody wants to work together, anybody wants to, uh, you know, look at studies or doing something together, we're in it to, you know, to partner with people and companies that really want to do the right thing. And, uh, you know, the, the future is that everything is going to be personalized. You're going to have your food, your vitamins, and everything else is going to be personalized. So uh, as Gretzky said, you skate where the puck is going to be. And that's kind of where we're going. There you go. There you go, Lynn. Uh, next time we're next time we have you on we're gonna have to have the dna tests ourselves yeah. well that's what i was maybe, gonna say maybe we'll I can have our actually, results. Yeah, exactly. actually yeah we'll, we'll do that we'll get you guys codes and then we'll get your listeners a discount code i'll get it over to you maybe you can share and anybody that's listening to this anybody that's watching this they can get a code and i'll be happy to come on and review both of your results it'll be interesting to see if you guys are willing to do this if there's a difference and i'll put the a piece of the puzzle together for you guys hey that would be fun man that, that would, would be cool actually yeah. Yeah. we're gonna have to do that lynn hey thanks for being here man it is a Thank pleasure you guys. I really appreciate it it's incredible science man but be well stay safe and uh we'll definitely talk soon thank you lynn